Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Wicked and tonight I'm going to be making a special video for you, for me and for everyone which is going to, you know, take a look at it. Well, a couple of years ago, I started this YouTube channel taking, talking about my S4, how to root it, how to, you know, install custom ROMs and now I finally got this year Galaxy S8 and I received a lot of positive feedback from you guys. A lot of you guys um appreciated really appreciated my content and i really want to thank you guys for all the support especially right now when i got this milestone of 10k subscribers which really means a lot to me and i just want to thank you guys for this and that's why i decided to make this video about uh, what is on my galaxy s8 and it's gonna be a pretty straightforward video i'm gonna be talking about the apps i use I'm going to be talking about the best configuration regarding the ROM slash kernel performance and battery life of course I know you you always wanted to to find you know a software a ROM which is really suitable for daily usage and uh, the one I use the most is Renovate Eyes this time version 6.1 so that's what I'm talking about a great uh, combination between stability performance and battery life. This triangle is really vital for me, especially because I'm using this phone maybe at its full capacity, 4G all the time, um, maximum brightness, you know, sometimes vo 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 LTE and everything is working as it should be, ways, music in the background, you know, maybe multitasking with the browser, watching a YouTube video while, you know, having the car stop for a um, red light. Now, I would really like to call it the triangle of perfection in terms of a kernel. You get stability, you get the battery life and you combine it with performance. I'm not talking about crazy performance, I'm talking about the way the kernel was supposed to be designed by um, Samsung. You know, everything is going as it should be without any lags, without any hiccups. It's not overclocked, it's not tweakable by any meanings but it is what it should be and what a, a standard user or maybe an advanced user like me is really expecting to have from a device like this. Uh, I've made some videos about Android Oreo beta program for the Samsung Galaxy S8. I will link that in the card section because they are really you know popular right now. Um, Things are getting stable and stable and I hope by the end, by the beginning of 2018, everything is going to be great and the, the 0.0 beta version Oreo for Samsung Galaxy S8 is gonna be released. So yeah, again, thank you for more than 10k subscribers. Maybe the biggest gratitude for me and the biggest, you know, um, mesmerizing uh, feeling that I uh, actually experienced is that I received maybe thousands of comments with thank you you helped me with the, the odin failure thing the um, how to root your galaxy s8 and that really means a lot to me i just felt that helping people which uh, got uh, into some problems with the galaxy s8 or maybe not with the galaxy s4 or just uh, were curious to see what can be done with the galaxy s8 maybe routing maybe testing some mods some custom roms and uh, that uh, you know every single thank you comment i really appreciate of course any negative feedback i uh, received really got me maybe a little step further into the game and as you can see everything is going fine right now and again thank you so much now let's get right into the video a little disclaimer before watching this video it is going to be a long one I hope that I won't get you bored that much and take in mind it took me hell of a lot of time to shoot it. I hope that by the end of it you will find at least one interesting app and test it by yourself. Thanks in advance. Everything that will be said during this video wouldn't be possible without a software base which has been running on my Galaxy S8 since they released the first 1.0 version. I'm obviously talking about Renovate Ice ROM, developed by the devoted Renovate Ice team. Since this review is about what I believe to be the best configuration for the Samsung Galaxy S8, you need to know that in my perspective Renovate Ice ROMs combined with Renovate Dream kernels are the best combination software-wise for the Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. Not only they offer a great amount of customizations, which I will discuss later on, but the balance between stability, performance and battery life 
is really more than enough for me. I have made many videos in detail about this ROM, if you want to check them out, they are listed in the description. Ok guys, so the first major category which I will cover is the aesthetics section. This one is really important for me because I'm a huge fan of completely dark themes and that's why most of the times on my device you'll see dark wallpapers, dark icon packs, dark menus or dark Samsung apps. Everything is set so that it looks minimalist and functional at the same time. Black is also known to cause less battery drain on AMOLED screens and that's a big plus. All the themes and overlays I will show you on this video are listed as always into the description or into the card section. Since the Galaxy S8 benefits of Samsung's Steam engine, I'm running a custom theme called Black Default V3, which is available into the themes, apps and mods section on XDA. It is not available in Samsung's Steam store, but you can apply it permanently with root and especially for that I made a video which you can watch in the card section. Now since I mentioned the word root, most of the following mods I will show you later on in this video need root. If you want to find out more about how to root your device, check a tutorial that is also listed into the card section. Let's move on to the aesthetics. The custom navigation bar is called Terpshikora V3 from the same developer who created the black theme and it is an overlay and that means it can be easily installed as an APK and modify the current navigation bar without root. As my default launcher, I'm using Nova Launcher since I reckon it's the most customizable one out there. I have a video on how to set it specifically like mine in the card section. As you can already tell, I mentioned links to various videos on my channel because the configuration I'm using right now is a composition, a seamless composition of many videos I made for you of everything I like. A lot of you guys ask me where do I get all these beautiful wallpapers. Well, this one specifically is from the Neon Glow C icon pack, which is also by the way my default icon pack. Regarding customization options, there's not much really left to say. Um, uh, oh yes, there is. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I'm running Renovate Ice ROM. This custom ROM comes with an application called Rice Twix, which will allow you to customize the most of your Galaxy S8. Starting with System UI Twix, Miscellaneous Twix, Colors, Status Bar, Buttons, and so on and so forth. It's everything you'll need in terms of ROM customization options, believe me. And since we're here, if you want to see more an in-depth review of RiceTwix app, check out the video in the card section because it would be pretty useless and time-consuming to tell you every single feature of it right now. That's pretty much enough with the customization and aesthetics area. Visit the comment section where you'll find every video that you can watch to see in detail every single aesthetic aspect of my device. I will also place videos related to the mods and apps I will show you in the following section. In order to understand my app placement, you'll have to understand the logic behind it. For me, there are three types of apps on my phone. The apps I cannot live without, which are placed on the main screen of Nova Launcher, the ones which I use frequently, which are the ones placed the right or the left of my main screen, and the ones which I barely use, which are not visible anywhere but the app drawer. So let's start with the ones I can't live without. Telegram. You may have heard about it. I consider it to be better than WhatsApp in every meaning possible, but of course less popular. I mainly use this to access ROM groups. Now, Viper for Arise is an application which was purely designed for audioholics. A video on how to install it is listed again in the comment section, pin post, mod section. I can't really describe this app in words, but rather in feelings. It is by far the best audio tweak you can apply on your device, period. You'll get tons of adjustments regarding the bass, treble, equalizer, dynamic bass, reverberation, and so on and so forth. I've been using this app on my Galaxy S4 since I got it and won't give up on it on the S8 either. It offers me the best audio quality. A simple and effective app to sync all my notes is Color Note, and I've been using it for more than 7 years now. Moving on, as the mail client, I use Gmail to administrate all my emails. And uh, along with the Viper for Arise shown earlier, the best music player available for me is Power Up. Without any doubt, this is the most versatile one. 
compared to the last year on my S4 where I wasn't using any official Samsung apps but rather ones from Google Play Store which used to do the same thing eventually. This time on my main screen there are no more than 5 official Samsung apps. My files, the camera, the phone app, the gallery app and the messages one. In my perspective this time they nailed it. They are organized, easy to use and they get the job done without a miss. Apart from those, I do use YouTube Creator Studio so that I can manage my YouTube account. This is the app where I reply to all of your comments. I'm a car lover, so when I go for a ride anywhere, I open up ways to be updated with latest traffic, potholes and police news. Google Play Store with Google Chrome are also two mandatory apps which I can live without and it's pretty much self-explanatory why. To be honest, I would like to replace WhatsApp from my home screen because as I said before, Telegram is a way better alternative for me. But since WhatsApp is and will always be more popular, all my friends will use it more often than Telegram so it will surely stay there for a long time. And yeah, these were the apps which I use daily. Let's get to the right screen and see which are the apps that I barely use. First of all, you can see that on the top of the screen I have the step counter widget from S Health and then down below some direct dial numbers. The apps are in the bottom section of the screen. The first one and maybe the most important is Exposed Installer. With this application you can install Exposed Framework version 88.2 if we're talking about Nougat, uh, if you have root. Exposed used to be a great tool a couple of years ago, but now I feel like the modules aren't updated as much as they used to be and that's why compared to the dozens I had installed on my Galaxy S4, on the S8 I only use Xinsta and YouTube background playback a lot. The following two apps are utilities, calculator and calendar, again both of them are the official ones from Samsung. An app which is always running in the background due to its unlimited photo backup is Google Photos. Domino's Pizza is an app which I use in order to buy some delivery pizza and AliExpress is a Chinese app and website with dozens of sellers and I have to say the price you pay for some products is really good. That's where I order all my basic stuff like charging cables, little electronic stuff and so on and so forth. The app I use to transfer my files between my PC and phone and vice versa is called Wi-Fi File Explorer. An app which I use to calculate math problems on is called Wolfram Alpha. Just like Waze, sometimes just a quick search after a place on maps is more effective. Exposed module YouTube background playback can be obviously noticed after opening YouTube application, playing a video and minimizing it in the background. The audio will keep playing as if you had a YouTube Red subscription. Finally, on the left screen, I have most of my banking apps like my Bird and Mobile and PayPal and an app which helps me track the orders from AliExpress is 17 Track. Apart from that, I use Relay for Reddit, uh, Root Explorer as a secondary file manager, booking from time to time to check latest prices for holidays, Snapseed and Pixlr to process my photos, and the, the Clock app to set an alarm, and last but not the least, Opera VPN when I'm using public Wi-Fi networks. The settings app here is used almost every day, but I couldn't set it on the main screen because it is not that mandatory and important and it can also be accessed from the notification bar. Speaking of the notification bar, this is how it looks like. Blacked out as you got familiarized, thanks to Rice Tweaks I can customize whatever color I want from here, including the status bar icons. I also use the edge bar, or the edge screen, with the selection tools, quick people access and weather as my default sub menus. So, as you can tell, from my entire video, everything on this phone is placed so that it looks good and gives me the right functionality. This is what my phone looks like and of course this is what my life looks like. Anyways, this was the gigantic video for today, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell icon so that you'll be notified with all my uploads. I'm Wicked and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Get Wicked and Google Plus at Wicked is here. If you like my video, don't forget to press that thumbs up button. As always, until next time, take care. Wicked is out. Bye bye.